So my name is Hope Bohannock, and I'm with In Defense of Animals. And I want to talk to you today about our international efforts. Uh, we have numerous different um, international campaigns and sanctuaries uh, that we support. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk to you first about IDA Africa. Uh, we have, uh, in starting back in 1999, a, um, a, a sanctuary that rec rescues chimpanzees from the bush meat trade. Uh, it's two square kilometers in Cameroon, Africa. There's right now 72 orphaned chimpanzees there. It's a forested habitat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a forested habitat. There's seven different enclosures. Um, most of these chimps came uh, very young from uh, when their mothers were killed in the bushmeat trade. It's much easier to kill mother chimpanzees. They move a bit slower than a female that doesn't have uh, a child or um, uh, a, a male. So unfortunately, they are often the target of the bushmeat trade. Uh, and then the babies are often um, you know, sold to, uh, illegally sold in captivity to pet, uh, pets or as pets or in a tourist attraction or something like that. But some are lucky enough to end up at our sanctuary uh, in Africa. And I wanted to talk to him about one particular uh, chimpanzee that touched my heart. His name is Arvid, and he suffered from um, meningitis, which is a uh, brain infection in um, 2009. It left him blind, deaf, and completely paralyzed. Uh, since then, he has regained his sight and his hearing, uh, luckily, but he is still a paraplegic. Um, so he needs uh, round, the, round the clock care, feeding, cleaning, which we do at the sanctuary. And uh, we had a uh, specialized wheelchair made for him uh, that puts him in a position where he is upright like a chimpanzee walks, but he rolls. Uh, and so he gets regular rehabilitation in that wheelchair, and he has been regaining the use of his hands and legs, uh, and we are hopeful that one day he may be able to swing in the trees with his friends. So, yeah. So, <laughs> some wonderful stuff going on in IDA Africa in Cameroon. Uh, now I want to take us to India. Um, IDA India is uh, a little bit different. We um, have partners there that very much wanted to help with the situation of the uh, stray animals all over India that were starving, not getting medical care, not getting spay and neutered. And they came to us and asked for funding and help. Um, since then, we have uh, um, uh, bought them, given them uh, two uh, rescue vehicles that they take around Mumbai, India to spay and neuter, to give uh, medical care, and it has reduced the population there incredibly. They've had a great impact. Uh, we're very, very happy with the work that they're doing. Um, they also have a, um, a water bowl program where we're buying ceramic water bowls, putting them around in places where uh, people are uh, uh, dedicated to care for those water bowls, clean them out and fill them with water daily so that the street animals have fresh water, especially in the hot summer months. So a similar issue that was happening in Mumbai is happening now in Bangalore, well, it's happening in a lot of places, but also in Bangalore, um, where right now the city is wanting to kill 50% of the street animals uh, because they are just so overpopulated. And we are hoping to start a similar campaign with these uh, wonderful activists uh, in um, the ones in uh, Mumbai in Bangalore, a uh, similar situation of sterilizing um, the animals uh, in the streets so that we can get the populations down so they don't have to be killed. Uh, so some great things happening in India as well. That's IDA India. I also want to talk about our Korean dog campaign. Uh, we have a campaign focused on the Korean dogs that are killed for human consumption, dogs and cats, uh, in South Korea. It's really a horrible situation, similar to puppy mills, where these animals are uh, kept in you know, just tiny cages. Uh, it can be inches of feces that they live in constantly with absolutely no medical care, no uh, uh, love or comfort of any kind, uh, and they are brutally killed for consumption. There is a, a, a myth that is perpetuated in South Korea that the more the animal suffers when it dies, the more virility a man will get when he eats the meat. Um, so these animals can be literally ripped apart. Uh, some of them are uh, drawn and quartered. They'll pull their limbs, break their limbs, 
um, and and it will take hours for them to die. So I, I, that's all the details I'll go into. It's it's really horrible. Um, cats are often boiled alive um, for the stews. So. Anyway, uh, the positive part is that we are working with two uh, wonderful groups. One is called CARE, Coexistence for Animal Rights on Earth. The other is CARA, um, Korean Animal Rights uh, Activists. Uh, so, well, you know, Korean Animal Rights uh, Advocates, sorry. And uh, we recently got a rescue vehicle for CARE. They do more hands-on and grassroots uh, um, rescue where they go out to these uh, farms. <laughs> dog farms and will ask actually just break in and rescue the dogs because they're often in rural areas where um, nobody's watching uh, and they'll actually rescue the dogs. They have a rescue facility. And we're also working with CARA because they're more education and outreach. Uh, and right now we're funding a bus ad campaign with them uh, so um, we can get the message out to the Korean uh, folks to not eat dogs and cats. I think this is a really important issue too when we do, we have our International Day of Action coming up on August 16th and we will have um, numerous cities uh, from, uh, I, have, I have cities in Canada and uh, South Africa and um, Australia all over participating. And I think it's a really important uh, campaign for you know, more westernized countries and, and America. People come into this campaign because they love their dogs. That's, you know, they're, they're very attached to their dogs, yet they're still eating other animals. Uh, and so they'll come into this campaign and, and say, you know, wow, I, I, could, I could never eat my dog. But I think it opens them up to realizing, well, what's the difference, really, in a dog and a cow and a chicken? So um, I think it's a, a great uh, uh, way to bring people in to uh, animal rights issues uh, in, in America and uh, these other places. And anyway, International Day of Action coming up. Would love it so much if anyone wants to be involved, wants to do something in your area. You can do a tabling, uh, leafleting protest. We are co covering all the Korean consulates in the U.S. Uh, and um, some people are doing letter writing uh, parties. There's lots of ways to help. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. We can talk afterward. And uh, thank you and please support In Defense of Animals.